Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Tester Certification. We are in chapter four talking about performance testing task and now getting into the last and most important part of this chapter that is the sample questions from the chapter four performance testing task. To get started, the very first thing which we'll be talking about as usual is the sample question pattern. And of course, we have a lot to discuss here as this is the most contributing chapter of the examination. As you see, we have got 20 questions coming from this chapter alone, which almost decides your 50% of passing criteria stating that, will you be able to make it up to pass the examination decides this particular chapter. That is out of 40, you will have around 20 questions only from chapter four. And if you see each and every topic plays a vital role at different levels. And most of the K4 level questions are appearing from here that being a tester, it will be really important for you to be aware of what sort of actions, what sort of activities are being performed by a tester when it comes to planning, analyzing, designing, implementing, execution of the performance test. And definitely, this is the core responsibility of a performance tester, and no questions asked, you have to be completely familiar with this. And in according to this particular breakup, I have put equal effort in order to break each and every topic to simpler form and talk about it in more detail, so that all of you can re actually find all detailed information to understand any concept and answer a question. So we'll be looking at some of the simple questions uh, in interest of time and see that how typically the questions can appear from this particular chapter as well. Right, to get started, the very first question we have here is you are working on a project that tracks health history information for patients across region. The number of records handled by the system is in the millions due to the large number of patients in that particular region. The patient's information must be accessible to doctors in offices, hospitals, and urgent care facilities. The information should be presented to the requester within three seconds of request. That means we are talking about the response time also here, particularly uh, for the patient with critical allergies and preconditions. Which of the following is a technical objective for performance that could be applicable to this project. Now, of course, we're talking about the technical objective of performance testing altogether, but at the same time, uh, they have also given you different things to put together so that you get carried away and get confused so that you may land up having a wrong answers, which is definitely expected at this point of time. So we just wanna make sure that you concentrate on the important parts of this particular section and do try to concentrate on what is that you are finally supposed to derive from this particular uh, scenario and come up with your solution altogether. Now, in this case, let's start analyzing these options, uh, starting with the option A. The response time must be within three seconds from the time the request is sent when there are 100 concurrent users making similar request. Now, that's something uh, strange here because A is not correct as this is a user-based objective, that what basically the account of user will be. And as far as they have mentioned this in the scenario, we can consider it. But in this scenario, they have not mentioned anything about it, that how many users will be looking into this. It might be three, it can be 30, it can be 300 as well. But that is not something which is from a technical point of view, but this is from the user count point of view and cannot be uh, a technical objective for our scenario. Coming up to B, the system must be able to scale to 10 million patients records with no degradation in the performance. That's something looks interesting because scalability is a technical objective for performance. Scalability, if you start with the basic understanding of performance testing, one of the aspects or parameters to be tested under performance testing is to talk about how scalable the product is. And that's where this becomes a more core technical objective for our scenario, but before we make a decision, we have to look forward to all the options and then decide with your final answer. Let's look at C. The system must perform at or above the level of legacy system when handling a similar load or responding to a similar request. Now that's again a little different kind of thing which can say may not be correct because uh, this is also user-based objective and not a very clear one on uh, 
one at that so it's just like you know it's just not something which is pretty much clear legacy system what is your legacy system have you highlighted to me what your legacy system has and what kind of uh, you know parameters what kind of performance configurations or uh, aspects does the legacy system have we don't have any clarity on this as far as we are not clear accurate and precise on certain information that cannot be called as one of the technical objectives for performance testing Coming up to D, the response time must remain the same when the disaster recovery system is in use uh, rather than the primary system and the switch over must cause no discriminable downtime. That again looks weird when you look at the option itself uh, because uh, this is a primary, uh, uh, this is primarily a robustness test rather than a performance test and which is to make sure that nothing happens if anything you know is tried on the system but but you know saying that coming to a technical perspective we are we are talking about more of the performance driven thing that are you talking about any of the parameter which generally caters the need of the performance testing and meets the deadlines or helps you achieve the defined slas or the goal of testing at the end of the day none of them so that's where you say that uh, this is not really going to you know, fulfill the need and expectations of the performance testing at any point of time. So as you see a deviation from any such expectations, uh, you just put them apart and say that, okay, these are not the things which I need to pick it up, rather the one which is very close and something which is more technical towards performance testing can be selected here. So the right answer here is B, the system must be able to scale to 10 million patients record with no degradation in the performance. Moving up to next, the question number two, though it looks very small, but interesting to answer, what is the value of nesting transactions for the performance testing? Now, uh, when it comes to value of uh, nesting transaction, you first have to recall what is a transaction. It is set of actions performed by users, and that's where you need to uh, measure a transaction time. So if you remember, we have explored a lot many things uh, similar to that and we have understood a deeper dive of the transactions. Here we are talking about the nesting transactions where it means that a transaction is within another transaction. So if you have a parent transaction inside that, there can be child set of transactions as well. So let's look at what exactly the option says to answer this question. We have A, it supports the concept of parent and child transaction um not exactly because uh, parent and child transactions may not accomplish anything meaningful in the terms of system usage so this is not a parent or child it's just like something which is outside and then something which is inside so both of them give you an a particular parameter of measurement like inside ones will give you the uh, API functions or specific functions uh, response time or transaction time whereas the overall will give you the entire action response time or sorry I'm not saying response time it's like transaction time so that's where the parent child relationship does not depend here that this is something parent and child should inherit it or should be you know continuing whatever the parent is trying to do and follow the properties or something no this is a transaction time measurement and has nothing to do with such concepts the nested is all about just uh, fulfilling the need of the system by having separately measurable coming to the b b says uh, it allows the tester to measure a series of discrete transactions. That's absolutely something close to what we are looking at. Uh, the discrete transactions uh, definitely can be nested together to provide response information for a series of transactions that would normally be performed together while still allowing measurements of the discrete transaction as well. So this is where we are talking about being more accurate, being more detailed, and at every point of time, we are just trying to be well, looking forward to what is the best thing we can have from an execution and we just break those transactions into more simpler and discrete format so that we can have everything what we need at any point of time so seems to be right but again let's cross check see it speeds the reporting time for the performance results i think transactions are nothing which dis drive the uh, drive the execution rate it just measures the transaction time no matter how long it takes so that's again not something which is correct. It will not affect the reporting time, particularly if discrete transactions are tracked as well. It will just uh, be measuring the overall transaction time applied during the execution. Coming to the D, it bypasses the network communication time by sending the transaction directly 
to the server that will process it. I think that's also not correct because this has nothing to do with bypassing the network communication. Transaction is just a single simple, a poor statement which says LR underscore start transaction followed by the name of it and then similarly end of it. And the moment where you end, it just measures the time taken to perform those set of uh, uh, actions or activities performed by the user. And that is it, nothing else. So the right answer here is B, it allows the tester to measure a series of discrete transaction which relates to the nested transactions for performance testing. Coming up next is the third question. Here we're just talking about something more interesting. Have a look. You are testing a sales application for an e-commerce system. You are particularly interested in the response time for when a user enters text to be used for search for an item in the database. You have noticed that the first time you ran the test, it took five seconds to respond, but subsequent queries with the same data are responding in 0.01 seconds. What should you have done during your scripting to prevent this issue? Now, of course, there are many reasons by which this can actually happen. And there could be, again, hundreds of reasons to talk about that, why this could be possibly possible at any particular scenario. Because uh, maybe that's something from the point of cache. Caching the memory could be, you know, guiding you well to move ahead of your time and reducing your efforts and taking a lot of information from the cache memory to say that, okay, fine, you're good to go ahead and you can take it up and say that, yes, uh, that's something which is going a little faster compared to the previous iteration. So that's where one thing comes to our mind that uh, a memory which is being stored to repeat the same activity again and again will be referred quickly. And uh, definitely that's the reason your second iteration onwards, things are being performed faster. So probably what you would have forgotten to clean the cache memory at every iteration. But yes, let's look at the option here. Uh, there's no issue. The system is just getting faster. <laughs> now, I think that's a pretty, uh, you know, irrelevant option for discussion. Uh, that cannot be the right answer. Uh, uh, it's highly unlikely as the system tend to get slower or faster unless this is a caching issue. So uh, everything comes back to the caching and we say that, no, this is not something which is okay. Uh, suddenly your five second drops to 0 0.01 second and uh, that is subsequently all your executions are happening in the same way that that does not make any sense. B, you need to log in each time to ensure that the transaction is performed again. Uh, logging in, I don't think could be a solution. Uh, it's not the user's information that is being reused, uh, rather the search result which you're trying to do. So you have to go back to the scenarios which are shared with you and relate it back. Does the login is the scenario which they're talking about? No, it's that someone who's trying to search and search can happen without logging in as well. You just have to relate to the real time and you will have the you know justification for your options right there. Coming to the C, uh, you need to be sure the cache is cleared because the query results are probably being cached. No justifications required. Not at all, because you know that the cache is something which can boost up your executions right from the second iteration only, not from the first. So I think that's very straightforward. Even if you don't look at other options, you know what the right answer is, but still you have to read all the options as a good practice. Uh, let's look at D, you need to use a different user for each test to avoid users information being reused without being restored. Uh, again, I think users are not uh, someone who are responsible for this execution. Again, the scenario says about search results, not about logging or logout from the system. So the right answer here is C, you need to be sure the cache is clear because the query results are probably being cached and that's where it is boosting up your subsequent executions. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. I hope you had a good idea of the sample questions from the chapter four. It's going to play a vital role as you have 20 questions coming from this particular chapter and we want you to take no risk. So make sure that you put your equal effort. And of course, there are lengthy questions. 
in interest of time, I'm not considering them in my tutorials, but you can always reach out to me and ask me your queries and doubts, and I'll be more than happy to resolve them. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.